Name Not Found's daughter Lily was here for a tour a few weeks ago uh, and found this dinosaur and took a liking to it, apparently. So I guess I should talk about it. I had a slight amount of trouble identifying it, is the thing. It was clearly a tyrannosaur because it's a theropod with two fingers. Uh, but the head was rather distinctive and I, I wasn't really sure what it was, but I figure it's a subadult Tarbosaurus. Tarbosaurus is effectively the Mongolian model of Tyrannosaurus. There's an ongoing debate as to whether it actually is genus Tar Tyrannosaurus or not. It was definitely the closest in size to Tyrannosaurus among the Tyrannosaurids. 30, 40 feet long, five to six tons. That's, yeah, there, there's no other Tyrannosaurids that large other than Tyrannosaurus. For the purposes of this episode, I'm going to refer to it as Tarbosaurus because there is a case to be made that it's different enough to be a separate genus. The thing about dinosaur names, first off, there's a lot of rules, which makes sense because it's scientists. But the rules don't always give primacy to phylogeny, and we're working on that, apparently. But it comes down to it's definitely a Tyrannosaurine, which is to say it's closer to Tyrannosaurus than it is to Albertosaurus, or Albertosaurines, which are Tyrannosaurids that are more gracile. They're, they're slenderer, smaller, they have shorter femurs proportionally to their bodies, and they have smaller heads proportionally to their bodies. But we're not sure whether it was close to Tyrannosaurus through convergent evolution, which is to say it started from a different point and arrived at a similar point, or maybe it's divergent evolution where Tyrannosaurus and Tarbosaurus, or as some would call it, Tyrannosaurus Batar, started from a common ancestor and diverged because one was in Asia and one was in North America. I'm going to call it Tarbosaurus because Tarbosaurus is a much better name. Uh, it was discovered in 1946 by a Mongolian Soviet expedition into the Gobi, uh, wasn't described and named until 1955. Um, there were a few, it was assigned, the material was assigned to a few different genuses. Genre? Genre is the plural of genus. One of which was Tarbosaurus, but the species for that was Efremovi, which was named for Yefremov, which is cool to me because Yefremov sort of invented uh, taphonomy, which is the study of how things fossilize, which is really interesting because when you have the bones, that's not as useful as how did the bones get there and what was the environment in which they fossilized? That's, that's an important field of study and Yefremov essentially came up with it in the first half of the 20th century. But we don't use that species anymore. We are gonna call this Tarbosaurus batar, which is actually a misspelling of Bayatar, which you will be familiar with if you know the capital of Mongolia. Uh, Tarbos is Greek for something uh, awe-inspiring or alarming. So you could make a case that this is literally called awesome Saurus Hero. And that's why I want to talk about it as Tarbosaurus instead of Tyrannosaurus. The history and theory behind this is going to be a lot more interesting than the actual analysis of the toy because it's not too bad. Uh, First thing that strikes me is obviously that it's standing tripodally like so many theropod toys. So get the spine parallel to the ground so that the center of gravity of the animal is at the hip. Tail should be a little bit longer to balance the creature and the skull should probably be a little bigger. Uh, the tail shouldn't be as long as you might think it might be because the skull on Tyrannosaurus was very light uh, for its size. The extra fenestra hole in front of the main Finestra, the antorbital finestra that all dinosaurs had, it was very large in Tyrannosaurids. They, they had enormous skulls, but they weren't as heavy as they looked. That said, the prominent eyebrow ridges and the ridge running down to the, the front of the skull is pretty accurate for this species. Even when it was fully grown, it, it was not as boxy as Tyrannosaurus. That's another difference that makes me think, in my unprofessional amateur opinion, that this would be a separate genus from Tyrannosaurus because the skull is much more streamlined and it seems like instead of North American Tyrannosaurus strategy of killing with bite force, this guy would have killed more like an Allosaur with impact, just based on the structure of the skull. And it definitely wasn't as boxy as Tyrannosaurus, which is good, 
The eyes are facing sideways instead of the binocular vision that Tyrannosaurus is famous for. The mouth is really flat though, and it should have more of a swoop in the front of it between the, the maxilla and the jaw. The nostrils are really close to the mouth too. Those should be higher up. That about covers the head. Let's go to the forelimbs, which are huge. You might say, well, those are tiny. Yes, Tyrannosaurus had tiny forelimbs. That's an ongoing joke, but Tarbosaurus had smaller than any of them. It was the, proportionally the smallest forelimbs of any Tyrannosaur. They were also pretty advanced, at least according to some analyses. They, um, they, they've portrayed it with the front fingers being equal lengths, which is not accurate for any Tyrannosaur. The second finger was always longer. But in Tarbosaurus, the second finger wasn't as pronounced of a difference from the first finger as you see in a lot of Tyrannosaurs, and the third metacarpal, which was really just part of the hand, it didn't have a claw or anything, was also much more reduced than in other Tyrannosaurs. This isn't to say that the forelimbs were vestigial, they served a purpose. We're not sure exactly what it was. The one I like the most is that it's just to hold on to prey while it gets its jaw ready to, to attack. Um, other people have said it's to grab onto its mate or to get itself up off the ground when it lies down. It could be all of those things. I don't know. The feet are not bad. Uh, they're, they've definitely got the accurate number of toes, but the dew claw is a little too low. At least it has a dew claw. You frequently see them portrayed without them. The toes aren't really splayed enough, and they're definitely too short. This has stubby little toes going on. The thighs could be beefier, but not too much else I can say about it. There's evidence from a new Tyrannosaur, I shouldn't say new, from a Tyrannosaur we recently found in China that Tyrannosaurs would have been covered entirely in downy feathers. Uh, this guy has the more traditional crocodilian scales. If you really wanted to be accurate, you could maybe cover it in feathers, but we're just not sure. We don't have soft tissue from this guy, so I can't speak to it. That's all I can think of to say about Tarbosaurus. I hope this answered any of your questions. Lily, thank you for watching Your Dinosaurs Are Wrong. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me dinosaurs you'd like me to have on the show. You could even send me a toy dinosaur. Our address is in the description. Go to thegeekgroup.org to find out how you can become a member and donate, and we'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon. I wanted to give all the cameras, yo.